think it's I don't think anybody is wrong for having expectations of playoffs. There was a lot of people who thought that Washington was going to contend for the division. There is nothing wrong with having those expectations. I think that's kind of where we get down to the bottom line of this whole conversation is understanding that while you can look at them as a year two in a rebuild, um, and I, I think that's an accurate statement. Another accurate statement is we forgot about the rebuild part. <laughs> we forgot about the rebuild part. Um, you know, amidst the, the hype and the, the buy-in and, and the buildup of what this team could be, um, expectations or, or excuse me, rebuild. I keep saying that part. So here we go. I'm going to list one, two, three, I'm going to list four teams where we talk about people who successfully at least transition through a rebuild, right? I'm going to list four teams and, and to be fair, I'm going to list out uh, three teams that unsuccessfully had went through a, went through a rebuild. And for those in the chat, if you all have other teams, talk to me. There was some that I left off because they're in the process of it. Like they don't have enough time to kind of transition or, or, or even have a result. So I left, I left some people off, especially like year one teams that's in, in the process of their rebuilding with their new coach. All right. So here we go. The good Cincinnati Bengals. Three years into their rebuild, uh, especially with Zach Stacy, they found their quarterback in year two. They've improved each season from a roster standpoint and from a win and loss standpoint. So let's go ahead and break that down, right? Um, or quickly, we don't have to, you know, go on every team. Or I say Zach, St uh, Zach Stacy. That's me thinking of the football, but it's Zach Taylor, um, not not Zach Stacy, the running back. Um, but yeah, Zach Taylor took over. In 2019, they went two and 14. He got his quarterback last year. Joe Burrow gets hurt, but they went four and 11, four, 11 and one. This year, four and two. Uh, let's go to the next team, the Cardinals. The Cardinals is a team who, uh, they're three years into their rebuild, found their quarterback year one, improved each season from a roster standpoint and from a win loss standpoint. Cardinals right now, seven and no. Oh. Um, and when Cliff Clainsbury took over, and I'm the person that's probably going to eat the most crow out of this because I thought that he was not, uh, I thought he was not ready or made for uh, the NFL. But he took over, they went 5-10-1 and one his first year. Second year, 8-8. Eight and eight. Third year, 7-0. and oh. They're already one win away after the first seven weeks from, from matching their season total from last year. The Bills. Um, five years into the rebuild. With Scott McDermott, Scott McDermott. All right, hold on now. Let me, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Sean McDermott. What, what is going on with my names right now? Five years into the rebuild. Found their quarterback year two. Improved the roster each year. And now they're winning 60% of their games and has had three playoff appearances in the last four years. And odds are they probably have another playoff appearance. So four, excuse me, four appearances out of his five years as the head coach um, because they're taking over that AFC East now that uh, Brady has moved out of it. Uh, again, another team with a rebuild and a successful one. The Browns, same thing, four years into the rebuild, found a quarterback year one, improved, each ro e improved the roster each year. They found a competent or what they felt was a competent coach in year three. Uh, he produced 11 wins in his first season. Second season is, I think they're four and three right now, but you get the point. They're, they have been improving. They have a roster that's really good, um, and they've built around Baker Mayfield, especially with the running game, right? All right. So, yep, Arizona, Buffalo, we talked about that. Um, I wouldn't say the Rams because, well, actually, I take that back. The Rams is a good team, too. Thinking back from McVay's first couple of years, that's, a, that's an excellent point. The Rams, too. Um, got Jared Goff first year. Um, and he's, he's been, he's been on the money ever since. Like, I don't think he's missed probably the playoffs one time. Um, and he's been there for five years now. So yes, the Rams, um, that's another guy. All right. So look, and here we get to the bed, the dolphins three years into the rebuild, found the quarterback in year two and they've regressed no playoffs, no playoff appearances, the giants three years into the rebuild. Found their quarterback year one. Found their coach in year two. Progressed slash no improvement, no playoffs. Washington, 
two years into the rebuild. Use their 2019 quarterback in 2020. Label the bus. It didn't work out. Still made the playoffs for obviously the, the context is what it is. We don't have to repeat that part. Now you enter 2021 quarterback injured. The team regressed slash no visible improvement. Same thing as the Giants. Same thing as the Dolphins. Three examples of three bad teams. Four examples or five examples, including the Rams, of, of, of good teams who have success, successfully went through the rebuild. I'm pointing this out to say, while we talk about quarterbacks being some of the problem, this is the reason why I mentioned that it was only 90% of the problem. Um, the Giants, they have a quarterback. The Dolphins, they have a quarterback. But why are they still sucking? Why are they still losing? There's a lot more going on over there. There's a lot more going on in Washington. And I don't know if the, um, when we talk about the, the coaches or we talk about the players and, and everything else that's going on in Washington, I think the quarterback is going to solve 90% of the problem, but 10% still exist. And this is 10%. Uh, let me catch up with the comments, but the 10% is what I want to talk about next before we get up out of here. Um, I'm not going to hold y'all tonight. You know what I'm saying? We got games to watch. Uh, Tampa, I don't know about Tampa, man, because Tampa, all they needed, all they needed for, for Tampa was, was, um, what's his name? What's, what's going to call it? That guy who won seven championships, that guy, um, that guy. So let's get into, uh, oh yeah. Organization. Oh, mentioned, uh, Buffalo, Arizona. We nailed that Rams. We nailed that. Uh, yeah. Baker Mayfield is, is questionable, but you kind of understand like he brought some competency and some stability to the quarterback position, something they was missing for a long time. Um, and then giants. Yes, they have, they have had plenty of injuries, especially amongst that offensive line. Um, and, and, and missing on Saquon at this point, like he's a, he's a dog of a running back in my opinion, but if you can't stay healthy and you can't stay on the field, then what does that make you? Tell me what that make you. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's get into the 10% that I'm talking about. Ask yourself this question. And just, just keep it a buck. Um, when you think about teams who do like, who do things well, or, or have promising items on their team, like, do they have a side of the ball when you can sit back and say, this is our identity. This is where we'll know we'll show up each and every, each and every game. Like what does Washington do well? And for me, when you look at the offense, nothing. When you look at the defense, nothing. I will give the honorable mention to the offensive line, and this is kind of goes back to the quarterback thing. I feel like the offensive line is the strongest unit, but they need to commit to something. Whether it's from a coordinator standpoint, believing that his offense and his 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 uh, his linemen can actually be road graders in the run game, and you can use all three of your running backs because he don't use all three of them and he doesn't use the, the top two, J.D. McKissick and, and Antonio Gibson enough, you can commit to the run game or a team who's pass protecting well enough, commit to the passing game. I don't think, I think when we talk about ha having to have a balanced offense, um, I, I, I always like understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to like, you don't have to be balanced. There's teams out there who are like their splits in terms of their run pass, like their run, their pass splits are like 65% of the offense. Like you don't have to run the ball and get close to 50, 50. You can see kind of where your team is at and understanding your, your strengths. And that's kind of, I think again, when we go back to the quarterback right now, they don't have that. Like you don't have that op op ability to kind of commit to, to a passing offense and a passing attack. And even having the receivers to create the separation enough to kind of win um, the amount of times that you need them to, to be successful. So I just feel like in terms of the offense, you don't have a strength yet. You don't have an identity. Um, and you, you kind of don't know what's going on there yet. And we're in, we're one and a half years in to something that's kind of, when we talk about rebuilds, that's kind of like, uh, you would have thought you found something. You would have thought you found something. Defense. I say no, uh, but the defense is talented, but inconsistent. So you can't be recognized as great or a strength if the unit is not in sync. So if you thought I was disrespecting the defensive line and stuff like that, take, take that out. I wasn't doing that. 
I was just saying, while they are talented, if you aren't consistent, that does not make you a good unit. There are defensive lines out there. There are defenses who aren't as talented as Washington, but they play together. They play in sync. They understand their assignments. They understand that I'm not going to make a play or I'm not going to be the one who makes the play on this one, but I'm going to set my teammate up to be successful uh, because that's my assignment on this, on this run, on this, uh, this, <clears throat> this runs, this run defense or this pass rush, excuse me. <clears throat> so playing together is something that's not really working out for Washington on the defensive side of the football. You're not great. Um, and you can't be great if your unit is not in sync, plain and simple. So what does they do? What do they do well on the defense? They don't do anything or they don't, they don't have that thing that you can sit back and say each and every week that they're going to show up. That, that does not exist. And then special teams, you don't have an elite returner to kind of break the game open. You just, you're just existing. Like, who cares about the kick coverage? I mean, obviously, if it was a huge issue, that'd be one thing. But when you're talking about returning, you don't have an elite returner. You don't have anything on that on that side of the ball either. So in all three phases, you don't have a strength. I um, mean, that's kind of where you get back and say, what does Washington do well? They don't do many things well, and they don't have strengths. And that's where you got to get back to the, the macro thing. What exactly is the plan? What exactly is the plan? Um, and that's what I want to close out on. Uh, when we talk about understanding what Ron wants to do, what this organization wants to do, he mentioned in his post-game presser expectations. We did not set those. Well, I guess we did, but it was it was based on you know what was going on in 2020. If the plan is to build up around the build the team up find that quarterback to plug and play you'll be successful a la the los angeles rams who did that with matt stafford this year um again we talked about it it failed but if you want to readdress your approach uh a, a year and a half into a rebuild i don't i don't even know if that's going to be beneficial too because it's like a reset of sorts uh i i just i don't think that'll work out so you kind of are married to your plan of building up this team but wh and which aspect are you going to go on for a quarterback do you want to take that risk and, and draft a quarterback top 10 which is essentially by you by your additional time that you may not know you have needed or are you going to go all in and trade for a proven quarterback which eliminates your time or your your leash because if you end up failing it points to the coaches again because the coach has the hey he, he he traded for his quarterback he made his move he got that defense he built he bought all these guys in that offensive line is looking good the the, the receiver Terry McLaurin he's having a pro bowl year Jonathan Allen pro bowl year all these guys are having pro bowl years or or I'm not even going to slice it. Those guys, some key, some key guys are having Pro Bowl years, but the team is still losing. And you got your quarterback. So it all depends on what route you want to do. Um, and I'm just concerned that time, time is not running out on Ron. Like, from a head coaching standpoint and having a job, time is not running out. I want to make that known. But I am concerned that his time on finding a quarterback is running out. If you miss in year three, miss meaning you don't acquire a top talent, whether it's free agency or draft or through trade. That's what I'm talking about if you miss. You miss in that category and you have to do a makeshift or put another Band-Aid on a position. You're going into year three as a team who's not really ready um, to compete yet again. Hold hard in the trenches, ask a nigga what he bench triple digits, nigga. Don't forget to mention. Hold hard in the trenches, ask a nigga.